Tawanda, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us this Saturday morning. So we can understand, obviously, why communicable diseases would be so prevalent um, in countries uh, with socioeconomic challenges where large numbers of people are living below the breadline in close proximity to each other. But can you tell us why non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease has taken over um, as the leading causes of death? What's, what are the biggest contributing factors there? Morning and morning to your viewers. So what we are seeing here is that even though South Africa is still a developing country, there are a lot of developments that have gone to improve the standard of living and access to food and people have changed their lifestyles. So if you look at measures such as the percentage of people who have obesity and overweight, those numbers have gone up a lot. And that plays into the higher prevalence of uh, non-communicable diseases that we are seeing. And what we're worried about right now is that even though we still have huge numbers of people with HIV and TB, now we're getting bigger numbers of people with diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. So it's not simply that we have shifted from having TB and HIV and now everyone has diabetes. We have a mix of the two. Mm. A lot of people have diabetes, a lot of people have cardiovascular disease, and that is, that's adding to a huge burden already uh, of treating people with TB and people with HIV. Tawanda, I want to find out from you about the significance of uh, the participation of women in this study. Uh, that research finding that one in 11 African women of childbearing age has type 2 diabetes and is at risk of cardiovascular disease. And a lot of these, uh, the, the study results were linked specifically to diabetes developing uh, during pregnancy. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, so this is a critically important uh, demographic for us because we have found that if a woman has diabetes in pregnancy, a child may develop diabetes in life, later in their life. If a woman, so there are two types of diabetes that a woman can have in pregnancy. The first one is type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, that's pre-existing, that requires treatment for life. And there's another form of diabetes where she just develops diabetes during the pregnancy because her body has failed to adjust to the needs of the growing fetus and your own body. Now, that type of diabetes goes away after the pregnancy, but it gives us a window of opportunity. It actually, it's like a glimpse into the future. Once we see this woman, we know that in future she has a high risk of diabetes and a high risk of cardiovascular disease. And furthermore, a child has a high risk of both diseases. And we are able to actually delay those outcomes or prevent them completely. So we have evidence that once you identify this second type of woman, you could intervene and stop her from sliding into full type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Tawanda, we know that uh, type 2 di diabetes is largely related to lifestyle, as you've alluded already. Do we Absolutely. have enough interventions in place to make sure that we can address the rising numbers of uh, people suffering from diabetes and cardiovascular disease in South Africa? That's, that's a critical question. That's a very important question. I can tell you that we, we know that two-thirds of people with type 2 diabetes are undiagnosed. They don't know that they have type 2 diabetes. We only find them when they come into the hospital with complications. And that's an extremely worrying point because at that point, the disease has progressed a lot and it has already started doing some organ damage. Do we have resources? We probably have, do we, are we doing enough? I don't think so. And that's also because our health system over the last 20 years has been geared towards fighting the HIV and TB pandemic. Almost all resources have been pushed towards that. And 
diabetes has sort of creeped on us. The, we need to put more resources towards its treatment and the prevention. So type 2 diabetes can be prevented and it can be treated. It can be controlled. We need more resources. Fantastic. Tawanda, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. We have run out of time. But thank you very much. Ending on a very positive note there, we do have resources. Uh, it is preventable. It is entirely able and up to you uh, to control your lifestyle to prevent uh, diabetes uh, from controlling your health. Uh, and that was researcher Tawanda Chevese.